Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello, and welcome to AutoLine Daily and TGIF. I'm Sean McRoy, filling in for John once again. We'll preview AutoLine this week in just a moment, which is all about exterior design. But first, today's top stories. Earlier in the week, Tesla boasted that the Model S received the highest safety rating of any car the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration has ever tested. But the agency says that isn't true. While NHTSA did award the Model S a 5-star rating, Tesla said it received a score of 5.4. The agency countered that it doesn't rate vehicles beyond 5 stars and that it doesn't rank vehicles either. And in other Tesla news, CEO Elon Musk says the company is considering opening factories in Europe and Asia. Bloomberg reports that the plants would be used to build a new mass-market, low-cost EV that is expected to be introduced within the next five years. Despite having the capacity to build over 500,000 vehicles at the former Numi plant in California it now owns, Musk says he wants factories in other locations to make it easier to get cars to customers. We've got more reveals of new cars that will take a bow in Frankfurt next month. First up is the new Chevrolet Camaro Coupe and Convertible. While not much has changed in the terms of styling, it does have a new front fascia, sculpted rear deck lid, and horizontal tail lights. The car is powered by the new 6.2 liter V8 that cranks out a little over 430 horsepower, and when mated with the six-speed manual, will race to 60 miles per hour in 5.2 seconds. That time is increased by two tenths of a second for the convertible version. When the Camaro hits European dealerships later this year, it will carry a price tag of 40,000 euros for the coupe and 45,000 for the convertible. That's 53,500 and 60,000 US dollars respectively. Up next is the new Audi A8. And like the Camaro, not much has changed in the way of styling other than a few more sculpted bits in the front and rear but it can be equipped with Audi's anticipated Matrix LED headlamps. The car has a variety of powertrain options, including three gasoline versions, one of which is a W12, two diesel options, and a hybrid system. It comes standard with an eight-speed trans. The A8 arrives in German dealerships this November with a starting price of 74,500 euros, which is just under $100,000. Also set to get a hybrid drive system is the BMW X5. The German automaker will show off its plug-in concept X5 eDrive at the show. Exclusive to this hybrid are specially designed roof rails and its aerodynamic 21-inch wheels. It's powered by a turbocharged four-cylinder engine mated to a 70-kilowatt electric motor. The concept can travel up to 19 miles and has a top speed of 75 miles per hour in full electric mode. An average fuel consumption on the EU test cycle is 3.8 liters per 100 kilometers, or about 75 miles per gallon. We all know the best environment for EVs is in cities with lots of stop and go traffic, but there's still the problem of having to find a parking space in a big city. So in stepped the Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology with a cool new prototype that we just had to show you. It's called the Armadillo T and it folds in half to help fit into the tightest of parking spaces. The folding action can even be activated using a smartphone. Click the link in the show notes if you would like to learn more about the prototype. Coming up next, a look at how safety regulations can affect design. Here's one of the great things about the all-around performance of our Dueler tires. Excellent traction! Do you need a ladder? Yes, I do. Okay. At Bridgestone, our passion for performance knows no bounds. On AutoLine this week, the topic is all about exterior design. In the following clip, former GM designer David Lyon, who is currently a partner at Pocket Square Design, explains how safety regulations can put a lot of pressure on designers. You see so many things coming along that uh, that are really throwing engineering like pedestrian protection and things like that where they're very difficult technical issues to solve they have a huge impact on styling I mean 
pedestrian protection probably more than anything else the last uh, eight but to ten years. I was going to say easily a decade because once it yeah. started and it's gone through the entire car front to back. Yes. Right. And so here's a new piece of legislation that engineering doesn't really quite understand. I mean, it's 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 more art than science even still because um, there's testing and, you know, well, we want to pass the test, so we're going to overcook this a little bit. And, you know, cows get raised up, you know, proportions Explain change on the car. a little bit. For the audience that doesn't understand, what do you mean pedestrian protection? You're not putting pillows on the hood of a car. That You're was doing, one early solution. Well, I, I, I know, and hoods know. blew off. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it, but it, explain it, it a little bit, it, Dave. It's, it's, it's very simple that, you know, when you, um, uh, if you were hit by a car, right? Um, at relatively low speed. Yes. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. These are relatively low speed. What would yeah. seem like a survivable accident isn't because, uh, not from hitting the hood, but hitting something under the hood, something immovable. Or the base of the windshield. Right. Mm -hmm. Windshield wipers. So, yeah. so basically, you know, the, um, the hood of the car really becomes a, a crash area as well. So there's crush space there's now. There's crush space. Basically, and it's, a, it's an extra three inches um, over above engine, shock mounts, batteries, what have you. So you're saying that raised the whole front end of the car. The front up. Now, you want to you want to drain all, all the color out of a designer's face. You say, you know, we're going to raise the hood uh, three inches on you. <laughs> Uh, you know, well, you know, then the person goes up too, the roof goes up, suddenly the car looks too big for its wheels, we got to make the wheels bigger. And, and I got to say that it has been probably the, one of the most difficult things for design and engineering to work collaboratively together because, you know, because these guys are, they're really just trying to solve this problem. Also joining John for that show is John Manugian, a teacher at the College for Creative Studies and Design Handbook's own Jim Hall, also of 2953 Analytics. If you want to learn more about car design and how it's evolving, this is a great discussion to watch. As always, you can view that entire show right now at our website, autoline.tv. And that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.